Father McGlynn has broken the ice in a way because I was going to say that for quite a few people here there would be uh, a number of guests of the players and so on who might not have a great deal of Gaelic. But by and large the presentation is going to be in, in the Irish language but I hope that you will follow and that you will enjoy what's going on. As I have just said, I think it's, uh, it's suitable that the presentation that these young people are going to give is by the young people of the parish and we are remembering the years 1939 and 59. And first of all, in this first section, I will be calling on Patrick Agus Grainian Shaw, uh, Agus Bishi de Jenna Rodigan Fa, when Nijok Trahanai, Agus Amahan Shaw, be Rodiella, when you are on group of Kiana. Marshen, toss on much Marshen, Agus Karchamanish Er, Grainia, Agus Patrick, when you are Kelleru, Nijok Trahanai. I want to clear the content. I see Lord the Poor Kid, me Dennis Ferry, I guess Kieran Kelly. Because it's Natasi, me Danny McGee, Hugh Swinney, John McGee, Dennis McGee, Benny McBride, I guess Dennis Duhu. I guess the Fair Islands, Paddy Du, John Swinney, I guess Charles Dunn. The Shatter Dinner and Shop Beyond You. Eddie McGinley, I guess in Chisharilla at Halaha. Dennis Ferry, Frank McGinley, Dennis McGee, Kieran Kelly, Ted McGee, Agus Mosey Coyle. Well, it was. We could work the new a double the club scenario. And this film is honor Agus Omas. Peter McGee, Neil Coyle, Danny McGee, Hugh Sweeney, Johnny McGee, Benny McBride, Dennis Doohan, Agus Leo McGinley, and Oct Kamni Majahushan, of La Hishti Gurwanan. We could work the new at Dubbard and Clubs in Amsham. And the mask we had to Harold Miller, Richard Conlon, Johnny Big Barney McFadden, Eddie McHugh, 
His character is more than a cosplay. Paddy McCarthy, against Charlie Green, against Gloria. เดี๋ยวไปเชิญลูกฟังเฟรชเชนมาหันชอบเอ่อกันภาพแล้วนะอากาศเอ่อไปชิดบรอนโรดีอาเฟรชเชนอันนี้เอ่ออินสันดานอ
want to see how you're getting on. I want to make you smile. I'm happy to be back again to tell you big and small of the clan elite team that won the cup from the west of Donegal. I knew right well the day would come when we would go through again while fathers prayed, their sons played the McCluskey Cup to gain. And now the bottles are filling up. The cup that's far from small will not forget the year that we beat the rest of Donegal. Now I'll give you the great line up and tell you how they played. McGinley's too, McCabe and Carr from forwards never strayed. While Doohan, Kelly and Young Keys just flew up to the ball, no other team on earth could beat the rest of Donegal. The time has come to speak of Paul and the fat young Eugene Green. They kept control of centre field and sent her over the beam. The hope of wandering forwards like young Doohan on the run, there's Kelly too and column three, the best in Donegal. Inside there's Barry who can score as only Barry can. McGinley's two out on the right, that day so nice and calm. We can't forget the good old subs who stood by far the call. And please God, from now on we will remain the best in Donegal.
band and one small thing told to me there during the week is there's a link between this band and the Mean Derry band which had a link with the football team of 1959 Eddie Doohan that some of the accordions that were playing in those days are still in the in the neighborhood and maybe I don't know whether they're tonight or not but they're being used now at this stage then uh, we have a few minutes in which to turn the lights and and cameras and so on on the top table because at this stage presentations and so on are going to be made and they're going to be made from that end of the room. So if anybody wants to do anything in this few minutes, we will change it. Alright, okay. Now, uh, I'm going to ask the salmon on the menu and they had choice of salmon here tonight. There's something, Josie is the local butcher you see in case of those. But very seldom, very seldom he gives any choice. <laughs> My role is just basically to introduce and to talk somewhat of the members of the two teams that we're honouring here tonight. In the year to have the been couple larger I could be shaken with another from the evolution of Boston. Now, Jimmy Corrine Clayton Neal, we push it here to Pohandia, the Corrine Clayton Emmert, and a drop word, we push it here, I could have a couple of Emmert. I could soon come out of your cup of Kidam, the Fana, the Hemru, Clayton Canish, and come in and create Shosher. Between Atulaba, Atulaba may have need your Kahawa. Nish, at a drop where you live, a shisher than Clarinson up in a knot, a chulu, a farawain, a lady, Mickey, the other fall, and her sab of the hack, for Maratatic Kuburg, Chulu Kubas, Rina Diana. What I'm saying really to those non Gilgori is that there are six of the 39 team present, as Tom Wells said. Another member, Eddie Mickey, known to lo locally as Eddie Mickey anyway, but Eddie McGinley from Drummatini could not be here. Three members of that team died this year alone. And indeed, I was talking to Kieran Kelly only a few weeks ago on the phone, and I sensed from the way he was talking, he didn't intend coming because I think he was afraid to see that Neil Kyle, Danny McGee, and Who's the third one? Charlie Doherty in the back. Day this year. They were on that panel. Incidentally, in case I forget, and I'm only just looking through front notes now, that team scored the enormous amount of 12 goals and 24 points on their march to victory while only conceding three goals and eight points. That, no doubt, is an indication of maybe two things the forward line were renowned uh, for their scoring ability 
And I suppose with Frank Himijin standing somewhere around the goals, the opposing forwards were afraid to go near anyone. <laughs> But he couldn't hit, he'd, he'd shout and say, put a few curses on him. And that was enough. And when Frank screeched, the hyenas ran. Uh, another item of worth noting is that the McCluskey Cup that he, both Eddie Doohan and Frank McGinley received as captains was presented by a gentleman by the name of Andrew McCluskey who, believe it or not, stayed in the self-same hotel many a time on his holidays. He owned the Castle Steam Laundry, simile in Derry, and came to North Donegal on his holidays. It's believed that, and indeed not only believed, it's a fact, that on one of his visits here, he got the loan of a jaunting car and went up, <coughs> but got lost, and the horse and jumped the car, came back about a harp on his own. <laughs> it's reminiscent of Joe McGarvey's wedding only a few weeks ago. <laughs> when Paddy O'Grady, unfortunately, that isn't here, and I suppose that's one of the reasons he didn't come. <laughs> Again, to enlighten ye, our present, perhaps best footballer, at least one of the best anyway, got married only three weeks ago, and his father-in-law is the one and only Paddy O'Grady, who was here years and years ago when he was a show band leader, a hackney driver, a man about town, he even fought with John Kelly. <laughs> and but John Kelly won as far as I know. <laughs> he is now a builder and a fanatical GA man in Dublin involved with the Robert Emmett's Club out in Walkinstown. But last Paddy was been very bright and smart and he got a loan of a horse and cart, or that's putting it crudely, I suppose it was a pony and trap, to bring his daughter Eileen and Joe McGarvey to the group to the church. But he forgot to tie the horse to Father McShane's railings. <laughs> <laughs> and the horse went back to John Kelly's field. <laughs> so that's what happened to poor Andrew McCluskey, who presented the cup to the county board similarly many years ago and I would imagine that it's still the same trophy that they're playing for. Anyway, as you know, the team that was out then included a lot more than the few that was mentioned. You had, Paddy Do was mentioned, Paddy Do was Herity of course in case not anybody here thought that his surname was Do. But Paddy Do was from Glashoku. John Swinney was a sub that, that time. Jimmy Doohan, Jimmy Peter, Dennis Doherty, that doesn't sound right. No, there's a brother as well, Den Charlie. Charlie Green, Simile and Paddy Doohan were injured for the final and that's the reason they were not actually playing. That was the 30, we we're not mentioning the 38 team tonight unfortunately, but basically they were the same team and another item uh, and I suppose there's no harm now, but seeing what happened to Tony Kelly and what happens with county boards and central council, an unusual thing happened in the sense that Kieran Kelly was transferred from St. Eunan's to Tohanili in March 1940 and he was still able to play in the 39 championship winning team. So uh, maybe there's something there that maybe some team would object to. We, we might have to hand back the cup. <laughs> so, uh, what's going to happen now is that we're asked our honoured guest, the county chairman, Charlie Faulkner, to present the scrolls to those members of the team. The, the six present tonight, as you know, were Frank McGinley, or our Frank McGinley, and I think Frank, if he can shutter, shutter his way up here, we will honour him by present, presentation of the scroll. And as
Frank was, of course, the captain, as I said earlier. Frank, indeed, was a very active referee in latter years. The next is Tech Fanny Dijek. <laughs>
Herr Joshi, ihr Kragel ist. Und die Kragel gehen nicht mehr. The goalie of the day that only considered 3 8 was Leo McGinley, and perhaps some member of his family that are around the corner there somewhere might come up. To <laughs> Peter McGee's son is here, I believe. <laughs> that is it as far as the representative from the deceased members present. So again, getting out of Bullard Boss Mind for the release. We also 
take this opportunity to invite our County Public Relations Officer, Mick McGrath from Valley Shannon, to make the presentation. That's Heather Wayne, you Heather McGinley. Another observation 
we always seem to have a great number of jellies around. And I am sure many of you uh, put together your thoughts about the Arts Beg family. There's a connection between the 1939 team and the 1959 team. Kieran, the old timer, and 1959, he was at least considered an old timer, is the brother of a number of others. Tony Kelly, who played in the 1959 team. Harry Kelly, Adrian Kelly, Paul Kelly, and Louis was somewhere in the background. Maybe at that time he hadn't surfaced, but he was certainly on his way up. There were also the other Kelly, who's John Kelly, from the Pulcara area. Now, I want to tell you that many nights, and John wasn't too long married, I wonder why his wife didn't throw me out on many occasions. But John Kelly and myself would be sitting by his little fireside in Falcari discussing football at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. And that went on for years. And uh, this afternoon, or this evening, I was in Glamno. And his brother, Joe Kelly, was over there as the manager of the under-14 team. Shawty Kelly, going back to that time, 20 years ago, was also involved with young teams. So I think it's a great tribute to John Kelly and to Joe that they are carrying the world. There's another family, the McGee family. A number of them are honored here tonight. There's a gentleman here and my first football game in Falcara. I was about 17 years of age I was running for a ball, Eddie was running for the same ball. I think I might have been picking up speed because I was young and he was getting a little old. He ran with the fist and he got me in the nose. <laughs> but nevertheless, Eddie McGee played football for a good 20 years with the Pulcara team. Unfortunately, his brothers got the medals and Eddie didn't. <laughs> I'm very happy that there was a reference made to Charlie Green because I was talking to Frank a little earlier. And Charlie Green was known as the nippy forward and seemingly the day he was injured over on the sands around and low, he had scored about 13 points. And the team over there were so fed up with his ability they decided to crack a couple of ribs. And for that reason he did not appear on the 1939 team. But again, the family connection we had Eugene Green, who played a magnificent role in our team of 1959. Uh, another observation, and uh, Tom Walsh uh, referred to it earlier, I did not realize I had any connections with the, uh, with the Melodians or the, that were being played here this evening. But I was told, and I would go along with it, that the drum was, that was being played here tonight was purchased back in 1959. That's a small bit of information. The other thing I would like to refer to at this time, and uh, it also goes back to Shawsey Kelly and the role he played with the youth. At that time, Shawsey and John and a number of others were very involved in starting a Ninter School Parish League. As a result of that parish league at that time, we had an incredibly great under-14 team that went to the county final under the under-16 and were beaten in the county final in Balba Bay. We thought at that time that we were going to have a magnificent under-18 team. Under-18, the minor championship was very important. When it came to selecting, that minor team, of the 25 people who were on the panel for the under 16, only one still remained in the parish. 24 had emigrated. And I know at the present time there are still quite a few ladies, but on the other hand, uh, I hope that it will not continue for too long. Uh, but I would also like to take it this time and thank 
the uh, people who are responsible for the night. I think it's a great tribute to the club management of the present time that we have this night. It's absolutely great to think that our 1939 team and our 1959 team are sitting here and sharing bread. I thank you. such a terrific job at mimicking many of our failures and making sure that we will be kept clean and in good shape in the Wax Museum in the year 2004. <laughs> I would also like to thank Charleston Cannon for his rendering of the Patty O'Grady song. It was an incredible thrill to have won that cup. It was an incredible thrill to take it around the parish. And I think Paddy O'Grady at that time epitomized what it was all about by writing this song. Paddy is not here. I talked to his daughter yesterday. She thought he might have been here today. If not today, probably tomorrow. But uh, it was a great thrill. And I thank again Charlton Bennett for the rendering of that poem that was written at that time. I think you've listened to me long enough. I uh, again thank all of you for being here. It certainly was my pleasure. We'd be far away in the half back like spot, but uh, by God, had to be I uh, got all any entity. When we stopped proceedings there for a few minutes, we had left out one member of the half back line. And indeed, anybody that remembers Tony Lee playing in the 50s and in the early 60s, the name Tony Kelly if a nice one thing, and that was spirit. Uh, if nothing else the club ever had, uh, Tony Kelly. Yeah. And if Anton Schuss was here, he'd know, but Anton Schuss, my brain, was from Downing's. Has I still, has I still a I have wish Tony would be able to get him by the hand. Anyway, Tony Kelly, it's our privilege to present this role to you. Paul. Paul Kelly, as I hope everybody knows and remembers, was without doubt Tahani's best known footballer anyway. He played with Donegal for, believe it or not, 14 years. He retired in 71, just before the championship winning team of 72 came together. Uh, Paul couldn't be here tonight, unfortunately. And indeed, Eddie Dugan mentioned Louis Kelly. Uh, anyone that was sharp enough would pick up the song that Paddy Galvin, would you believe it, was not mentioned in the song? Oh. Now, why, I don't know. But one of the reasons perhaps was that Louis Kelly was in unit at the time, and as Eddie Newman said, the priests weren't as uh, benign towards the GA, maybe they didn't let her Kenny, I don't know. But Louis wasn't allowed to play, and maybe that's what Paddy really thought, that Louis would have been playing, and Paddy Galvin was only a sub. I don't know, Paddy, don't blame me that saying that you're a sub tonight. Anyway, the next was the man who was referred as Saucy earlier, Eugene Green, and his great privilege. And it's great to see a local making such a success of life as Eugene is, and indeed, only a week ago, I was reading where he was made chairman of another investment company. Is that right, Eugene? <laughs> I won't tell you in case that you want to start buying shares. <laughs> Paddy Bird Kelly, he's on the best. As I'm sorry, I think of all. I'm holding it up to
Larry Bob Kelly, I was love to be a player near the 50 skater. John, they say that you should talk. John Kelly was involved since even the early parties and still active enough. And indeed, I suppose when Josie Duhon retires, John will still be able to come back and take over chairman. <laughs> As you know yourself, Josie is greater than yourself. There's one left, and I suppose the person who was most involved with the Clarity League team prior to John Kelly's coming on the scene, Father, we the Rus Rebel Father, son Johnny Ferry, Johnny Big Ferry, Johnny from Pumpkin and Ardy Big. I got Rocconi and Gilalta and Giru and Heel, like Johnny Conlon. I got Sinan Thie, and then I met Johnny Conlon, and I saw it again. Hart and saw that, and Rudsha and Laku and Hunt Johnny Ferry. Thank you, Michael McGrath. I think that is my concluding speech. So I'll hand you back to Josie. It's very seldom, it's so long that Josie, well Josie tells me, the way Josie tells me points, that to hand over to our country chairman, Charlie Faulkner. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to be here and I'm very grateful to Josie and the Kamanili Club for inviting me to this very historic night. Uh, I'd also like to introduce uh, a very good friend and a very good officer, a new officer of the county board, Mick McGrath here. Uh, he's one of the great finds in Donegal and he's doing a great job, so I'd like you to just make a great Behind every good man is a good woman, so we give Mrs. McGrath a stranger to this end. Now, uh, it's great to see so many faces here belonging to the two teams the 39 and the 59 teams. And it's also uh, very striking that you still have the two captains uh, to be able to be here tonight to receive their awards and to meet their old friends again. And Brian McGinley, don't be disheartened that you went back to Dunfanny because they tried to throw you out of here four or five times and you wouldn't go. You went on your own bat at the end of the day and you're doing a great job in Dunfanny. Thanks a million, Brian, for the work you're doing and for the honour that we gave you last year of being Club Man of the Year. You deserve it for the work you do. <laughs> now, these nights don't happen. Somebody has to start organising them. And as our good friend here says, Josie just points a finger at you and he says, come on, it has to be done. And with himself and his gang of helpers, including Tom, and our friend Young McGee here in the corner, and a few others, we got this thing together. And uh, it was a pleasure to watch the young actors coming in there tonight, and that young band, who were already All-Ireland champions twice, and please God, uh, they'll uh, go again, and hope that uh, Balbo Fee doesn't beat them another time after tonight. I see John McFadden down there. John, you let us away with it tonight again uh, on the football field. But the band, I hope, does well when it goes to Sligo to the All-Ireland Championship. Um, uh, I would like to thank Father McLean, the President of the Club, for welcoming us all here tonight. Father John is always very faithful to the club, and it's a great pleasure to see him looking so well. To be here tonight. I would like to congratulate another friend of ours here, Father uh, Paddy McShane, on his new appointment to the parish of Donegal. And I know that he'll be very welcome in Donegal 
and uh, that he'll do as good a job as what he's always been doing here in Pontarra. <laughs> I'm very sorry to interrupt, but there's another man that same team, and you can tell him that this man here, and he wasn't able to call him. Okay, Eugene McCabe, he's full back. Thank you. I'd always said that the young have to push the old, and I'd like to welcome Father Martin Dugan here tonight, the young ordained priest, Father Martin. I hope you do well on your mission and have the best thing out of the Well, the man that's writing the notes should always speak, I think, as well. So I think Mick McGrath should certainly honour the occasion by saying a few words. Reverend Fathers, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for asking me to say a few words in it, and I will keep it to a few words. Um, the evening has dragged on, I'm sure, for you. But it's a great honour for me and my wife to be asked to attend this evening's function, and um, it's great to see so many memories being rekindled and with the faces being reunited here from 39 and 59. And although somebody said earlier that Maybe Club Ely didn't get its fair representation in county teams. I think I've heard quite a few names mentioned uh, tonight that have actually had that honour. And uh, maybe it's not in the too distant future where once again um, there'll be plenty of Club Ely men and from the same around this vicinity knocking on the door of getting the, the county jersey on. At the moment, Club Ely are doing tremendous work, and it's not going unnoticed at underage level. And it was saddened somewhat tonight to hear that they actually got defeated in the under 14 county semi final. But that wasn't after defeating a very good Ballyshannon team last week. And uh, that's no mean feat to uh, beat them at underage level. And uh, hopefully in the future the, the work can continue. And I know John Kelly, the Kellys, do tremendous work there at underage level. And maybe some, some of the people that have returned here tonight to be reunited should maybe consider encouraging and even getting down to doing some of the hard work that's needed to keep the GA alive in some of the areas where other codes are striking very stronger and we should keep it and be very proud of it and keep it flying all the time and be proud to be marching behind the flag. Thank you. hands the mic back to me. <laughs> I don't get stuck for words, but uh, I think I'll take Charlie Faulkner up in when he mentioned three of the priests present. I think it would be bad not to mention one person, and bad is probably an appropriate word, but Ashan O'Gallagher, Thuggard, and Shaw A. Egan, and certainly Father Sean Gallagher, I suppose maybe clubman or GEA man, or whatever you want to call him, of the decade or perhaps in the year 1999, the century, because the amount of work he presented to GEA had to create a contest. I was the... Now this is what I get a popular item that was. Josie's asleep. <laughs> Must be the salmon yet. <laughs> now, our esteemed chairman, he laughed himself, so I don't have to laugh when I said esteemed. Is there a Lord lid? I had a coffee, a hundred, I just had you. 
Karukid Mina Fadi Ro J E War Shall Not. I'd like to welcome everybody to this special occasion tonight. When we started off this about three, four months ago, nobody ever believed that we'd have a night like this in McFadden's. It's unbelievable to see the old, the young here. And this wouldn't be possible without our sponsors. And I'd like to thank the sponsors. I'd like the sponsors, when I call out their names, to the representatives here to stand up. For the ESB, I'd like Kevin McGlynn. Carl Sway down there for Rupert McGinnis. Some of it around Dunfanny and Tahanili and some of it over in Downings. 
Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the five years, so much so that Donegal is part of my life since. I come back here on holidays, I would say every second year, and I'm up here anyway, at least a couple of times a year for short weekends. So uh, that's the sort of thing. impression it has left on me. Um, uh, on behalf of my wife and myself, I just want to say thanks very much for inviting us here. I was delighted I was able to come, and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. I'm not going to be in this Paddy Gallon. Paddy was never in the hurry, so I don't think you're in the hurry now. genuine friends, people that I knew back in 1959, I got to know them very well. Uh, I've met a lot of them, not them all yet. Um, I was playing with Clown Lady, I came in 59 from County Meath. I was talking to Peter McGinley down there, uh, he remembers the club, or knows the club and the location, the club I played with in County Meath before coming here. Uh, I don't think I was legal that year, Peter, so don't tell anybody back in County Me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was looking down at the fellows in Dunfanaghy, there, the McGinleys. I remember meeting a fellow, I went up to Ballad Buffet one Sunday, I met a pal of mine from Dundalk who was playing with the Dunfanaghy team that time. So it's very strange the way things happen. <laughs> Paddy Barry was his name. Yeah. <laughs> and then, not the Paddy that played with us. And Jerry Finnegan was the second fellow. They were illegal, but I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> and coming back, somebody made a reference early on, earlier on, I think it was um, Tom Walsh, about a very prosperous vigiler in the locality. I'll tell you something. Josie picked up his trade, taking slavers of our, our shins, playing football down the field. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank you once again and thank the organizing committee for inviting Maura and myself here tonight. I thoroughly enjoyed it and I'm sure I'll enjoy the remainder of tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs>
And one of them that never played takes back to mind was Billy Kelly, goodness rest him. And another was Brainy Hennedy. These men done just tremendous work for Clown Ely. They never got a medal, they never got nothing at all. Nobody ever, all they got is a kick in the ass or a good job if it wasn't done. So I'd like everybody to go out tomorrow and um, support, um, support us for the mass. We'll have a dance here tomorrow night for um, dance here tomorrow night. So I'd like you all to come back tomorrow night to meet and have a good weekend. So get a real mind of a dig when you're chatting so or not, and it's got a real mind of a rest. Slam, here I do.